And it's time now for business with co-anchor of CNBC's Squawk Box, Andrew Ross Sorkin. He's also a columnist for the New York Times. It's nice to see you in so person. So business for the bell. We, we, we were going to talk about, we talked about many things the last block about all the people that are sort of cozying up to Trump after yep. after being uh, distant from him. Uh, New York Times business, you and I talked about before, and Wall Street warms up to Trump, mm -hmm. and you open up the article, and it just talks about... Uh, it says, and, and, and you interviewed Jamie, Jamie yep. Dimon, and so you're still, you're like, Jamie didn't go all the way there, but this New York Times article suggests that Jamie Dimon provided cover for people on Wall Street to support Donald right. Trump. There's also uh, Mark Andreessen's uh, name in there as a guy that Mark said Andreessen, he's Ken Griffin. going to do whatever he can. I, I, look, I still, I still Trump. think those comments that, that, that Jamie made have been misconstrued, but I do think there's clearly a sea change among historically Republican uh, Republican business leaders who had tried to walk away from Trump mm -hmm. said they were effectively walking away right. and have now uh, returned so, so, so to Andrew, the scene, I know they will. don't usually follow uh, the Dow Jones average but they're richer than ever. They're, they're richer than ever. By the way, the Dow, the Dow is 92 90. points away from yeah. the, the, the heights. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, historical It heights. just keeps breaking records. It's about to go over 40,000. And these people, these people that keep whining about Biden's a socialist, like, if this is socialism, I know a lot of, like, hedge fund managers would say, give me more, because people just keep getting richer and richer right. uh, on Wall Street. Well, there's also this very other strain. You know, there's also the Bill Ackman view. Though. So there's there's a, the Republican Republican business leaders who are returning to Trump, and then there's this other view, and it's sort of led by a Bill Ackman kind of category that somehow doesn't like Biden, uh, also mm -hmm. doesn't like Trump, but somehow thinks in a sort of fever dream like way that there's going to be some kind of you know unicorn who's going to emerge as a you know and come in and, and replace Biden, yeah. and so they're going to slam Biden over and over again. Hoping somehow that he's going to step down. How, how, which calculated, I don't how calculated is this? How many people just want to be the next Treasury Secretary? Well, look, or no, just want to have. There, it. there are those who just want to be in the circle. There's the, there's the group that always just wants power, right? right. The sort of amoral. I just want to be with because power, they got the no money. Matter what. They got the money right. now because Joe Biden's stock market's bigger, powerful than Donald Trump's was. But you know, the thing we were talking about during the commercial break is. There's a value in the business world and in life to stability. Right. To stability. And just think about the volatility that is going to emerge uh, if former President Trump becomes the president. I mean, I think if there's anything you can count on, it's volatility. So, okay, let's give a perfect example. Okay. All right. And, and, and Wall Street dudes, if you're too busy counting your money right now, you may want to look up at me because let me tell you what the world looks like if Donald Trump's elected president of the United States. <laughs> I mean, and I know this. And I went to Alabama, I took one okay, Econ 101 go. class, and I read Sports Illustrated in the back. But even I know this. Donald Trump is going to take control any way he can of every lever of power possible. He's not going to like interest rates high, so he's going to lower them. He's going to press. He's talked about taking control of the Fed. He'll do it. The inflation, seriously, all I can say is go to Home Depot and buy some wheelbarrows because you're going to be like shoving dollar bills around in your wheelbarrows. That's just one example. Right. If he takes control of the Fed, you know what he's going to do. Even when it's going to be the worst thing for the economy, it's going to be right. inflationary, so he's going to lower look, I think, interest rates. I think that the business community knows this, though, too. He will find a way, in his own way, to try to juice the economy. The, the problem is it's going to be a sugar high. By the way, we saw this before. We saw this movie, be, movie yeah. before. And in everything he's done, there is a sugar high. And they want the sugar. But the question is, what, what happens after the sugar? And that is the real conundrum. And beyond the issues around what democracy find out? and everything else. 9% interest rates after the sugar. It's going to be higher if Trump gets in there. And suddenly on, and he's saying, I'm going to, I'm going to control... I'm going to control, you know, the FEC. I'm going to control uh, the FTC. I'm going to control the Fed. I mean, we know where this leads. It's bad. I mean, talking about Jamie Dimon, I think 2019, Jamie Dimon was running the Business Roundtable. Yep. 
as you know, and he put out what they build as a historic statement on behalf of all American big enterprise, mm -hmm. reversing a decades-old policy. The decades-old policy said the purpose of business is only to serve shareholders' interests, and that's how they had been doing it. 2019, Jamie Dimon goes out front and says, no, 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 society matters. All of our stakeholders right. matter. Corporations are no longer just about the bottom line. We care about these other issues, right? It's now been five years. You spend a lot of time yeah. with CEOs. Do you know a single CEO with a real moral core by which I would say they would sacrifice shareholder value? And you could cite a place it, where they I'll did make it, it worse for you. <laughs> I was at a dinner. Mm. I'm not going to say who was at the dinner. I would say 20 plus uh. CEOs you know. Um, and everybody actually went around the table. If you would sign that pledge from 2019 about society over profits before, if you'd sign it again in this environment today, I think it was like three or four hands went up. Why? <sighs> I think that there was a view that the, the, the push towards ESG, environmental, social governance types of issues. Right. I mean, I think you're seeing some of the DEI things that have happened now on campus and other things that by saying that they were going to focus on all these other issues, that it became too complicated for them. It goes back to DeSantis, frankly. I think that they all of a sudden realized that there would be a political push on the other side against them, and they got gotten scared. Mm. And we should okay. let them be them, but treat them accordingly. If, if they are, in fact, operating with no moral core and only for the purpose of their investors, we should tax and regulate them accordingly and not treat them okay. as sources of wisdom, of political guidance, or, or we'll, kind we'll of moral streaming courage. Bundles we gotta, yeah, we gotta, football, we gotta do football, that. Football, NFL, football. All right, Netflix. I mean, that's Andrew a Ryan. huge Morgan. move. Christmas, thank you very wow, much for being Christmas on this coming morning. Early. That was very depressing. Can you be here tomorrow? I'll see you tomorrow. Artists, thank okay, you good. very much. Thank you.